friends. Today I want to share my top five tips for teaching fractions to students in fourth and fifth grade. Now, whether you've already started teaching fractions or it's coming up on your scope and sequence, it is never too late or too soon to start implementing these five ideas in your classroom. So let's get started. If you're new around here, I'm Brittany Heggie, the math obsessed educator behind Mixing Math, and we are about to dive into one of my favorite math concepts to talk about. If at any point during this video you are loving a tip, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you do not miss future videos. So what are my top five tips for teaching fractions in fourth and fifth grade? Well, let's start with tip number one, and that has to do with students' mindset around fractions. Now, there is a lot of dread that comes into our fraction unit. A lot of times it comes from teachers because we were taught fractions in a way to where we were not confident with them, we weren't given um, an experience that was really empowering and long lasting. And for a lot of our students, that is the same experience they had. If there is a student that is not confident in math in general, or confident in themselves as math students, it's likely because they had a negative experience with fractions. And so I think it's so important for us to right up front deal with those mindset blocks. It's really hard for students to learn when they are feeling intimidated by a concept or they are fearful of a concept and they have those negative experiences. We want to get them in the right mindset. And so how do we do this? We give students a win right off the bat choose an activity or a game or some type of introductory lesson that you think your students will find a win in and praise them up for it. When students start learning fractions from a place of confidence, you're gonna see their willingness and their motivation to learn skyrocket because they know that they've had a successful experience before. A lot of our students in fourth and fifth grade are coming to us with no experiences, no successful experiences with fractions. So. It's our job to change that right from the beginning of our fraction unit. Now, once we've given them that win, my next tip for you is to make fractions a highly visual and highly hands-on learning experience for your students. It's not uncommon for students to come to us in fourth and fifth grade with the majority of their fraction experience or instruction revolving around algorithms or steps and procedures. And so we can immediately shift that experience or their perspective about fractions when we are giving them an opportunity to work with fractions in a hands-on way, when we're bringing in those manipulatives and allowing them the opportunity to actually learn the why behind the fractions and to actually understand deeply what a fraction is. This will go a really long way throughout the entirety of your unit. I'll go ahead and tell you my favorite manipulatives for teaching fractions are pattern blocks. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen me talk about pattern blocks with fractions a whole lot. I also love blank fraction tiles. Not having those labels on the fraction tiles really allows students to have a deeper understanding of the fractions and blank fraction tiles are actually really versatile because we use them again when we are teaching measurement. And the last manipulative that I absolutely love to use with students in our fraction units is sticky notes. Sticky notes are just so versatile. Students can actually work through and cut up the sticky notes as they need to. This is especially helpful when we're working with multiplying fractions and dividing fractions. And who doesn't love a good colorful sticky note? So if you are just getting started with making fractions a hands-on learning experience for your students, I highly recommend that you start small. Give students a problem and give them the manipulatives and have them explore the problem with manipulatives. We can obviously go a whole lot more in depth with manipulatives, but if you're new to using math manipulatives and making fractions hands-on, that is a great place to start. I actually have an entire library of videos and resources specifically designed for fourth and fifth grade math teachers to use with their students and really help you learn how to use math manipulatives in a very intentional and deep way to grow students' understanding of the math concepts they're learning. So if you are interested in putting your name on the wait list for Mix and Math 360, there's a link in the description of this video. Just add your name there and you'll be notified when we are opening up enrollment to new teachers. Okay, tip number three for teaching fractions in fourth and fifth grade is to connect the fractions to life outside the classroom and make an event out of it. There is so much more buy-in when students know how they would ever use these fractions and fraction operations outside of the classroom. There's usually a lot less fear and a lot more engagement when students have something to visualize, an actual experience, and they can act it out. 
So make a theme out of the day. Intentionally connect all of the problems and all of the activities so that they fall under that one theme. So it could be a bakery. It could be a day of construction. There are so many different ways that we use fractions in life outside the classroom. And so if we can make a whole day around one theme, it feels like some really special event. Now, of course, you could add different elements if you wanted to, like bring in some decor or turn on some bakery sounding YouTube music, whatever you wanna do. But this is a really quick and easy way to just make fractions a little bit more engaging in real life for students. Tip number four for teaching fractions is not quite as fun and comfy as the other tips. But if you have been around here long enough, you know that I was going to include this tip in my top five, and that is don't jump to algorithms too quickly. So you're already winning if you are giving students those hands-on learning experiences right from the start of your fraction unit or units. Now, where we sometimes go wrong is we jump from the hands-on phase to the algorithms really quickly and it's at a big abrupt stop and students are freaking out because you've just taken the tools away from them that have really supported their learning. Rather than spend a day or two working with the manipulatives and then the very next day they come in and all the manipulatives are up and they're working with algorithms, instead of doing that, we want to ease into the algorithms. We wanna make those connections between what they're doing in a hands-on way, um, what they're doing with their visual models, and then what they're doing with the written methods. And so what I like to do is, as students become fluent with using those manipulatives and they can solve the problems with the manipulatives, then start kind of stretching them or pushing them to say, okay, I see what you just did there with manipulatives. How could you use numbers and symbols to write that, to show your thinking in a different way? And so students are actually doing it both in the concrete and with written strategies at the same time. And then we slowly kind of remove the manipulatives because eventually kids get really tired of showing their work or showing their thinking in two ways at the same time. To me, this phasing or fading out of students' work with manipulatives or even drawn models is about two things. It's really about confidence and connection. So first, we want students to understand how what they're doing with the models, whether those are actual physical models or drawn models, we want them to see how that connects to their work, um, their written work or the algorithms. But then also we want them to have the confidence that they are ready to work in just that abstract phase, just using the algorithms. And so when we give students an opportunity to do both at the same time, it gives them a chance to boost their confidence, see those connections, and then we're really setting them up for success with all of the fraction algorithms. And our last tip of today is to have fun teaching fractions. We have so many students who come to us with this overwhelming fear and dread of fractions. What better challenge for us as teachers than to make them absolutely fall in love with fractions? And let me tell you, if students fall in love with fractions, that love of fractions trickles into all other concepts of math. Students are gonna be working with fraction or fractional reasoning all throughout middle school and high school. We want them to have positive connections to their fraction learning experiences. So one thing I like to do before planning any math lesson is what can I do to make this more engaging? What can I do to make this more fun for students as they are learning it? It's not about being fluffy. It's not about teaching any less in depth. It's just about giving students that warm, fuzzy feeling as they are learning math. And so a lot of what I've already shared with you is going to make fractions more fun for students. When you give them a win right off the bat, when you make it hands-on for students, when you connect a life outside the classroom, and then when you wait to move students to the algorithms until they're ready, that's naturally going to make learning fractions more fun because they're not going to struggle as much as they would if we weren't doing those things. But it's nice to have a, just a little bit of pizzazz that we can add to our lessons. And so anything that you can do to add a little element of fun is going to be well worth it, both for you and your students. What teacher doesn't love watching their students have fun? So I actually have a free fraction project for you. I'm gonna put that in the link in the description and it is a Play-Doh factory fraction project. My students obviously loved this project because it was very much real world, but they also got to make Play-Doh in the classroom, which, who doesn't have fun making Play-Doh? So I will put the link in the description so that way you can download that 
for free. And that really wraps up our top five tips for teaching fractions in fourth and fifth grade. I hope these tips were really helpful for you and that you will take a couple of them into your planning time with you and just consider them as you are planning your next fraction lesson. Think about which of these tips you can try with your students and definitely come back and let me know how it goes. Be sure to leave a comment on this video. I would love to know how your fraction unit is going. Be sure to like, subscribe, share it with a friend, and I can't wait to talk math with you again soon.